In the small town of São Pedro dos Campos, a mystery began to unfold inside the old church, situated on top of a hill that seemed to watch the town silently. It all began subtly, almost imperceptibly. At first, Father Vicente thought the items were just out of place, but the frequency of disappearances made him suspicious. Candles, rosaries, small statues of saints, objects that the faithful used to leave as offerings or promises, began to disappear mysteriously. Father Vicente, a man of solid faith and serious expression, always attentive to detail, observed that the missing objects had nothing of financial value, but were of deep spiritual significance. As the weeks went by, the faithful became restless. On the way out of Mass, Mrs. Alzira, a white-haired woman with a suspicious look on her face, commented quietly to the other parishioners, This isn't right. Sacred objects disappearing like this? Someone must be desecrating God's house. The murmurings quickly spread, and Father Vicente himself began to worry. Although he didn't easily believe in superstitions, he couldn't explain what was happening. He devoted his nights to a silent vigil, hoping to catch a glimpse of who or what was disturbing the peace of the temple. It was on one of these nights that he noticed something peculiar. While he was alone at the altar, his thoughts were interrupted by the sound of light footsteps. Turning around, he found a pair of glowing eyes staring at him out of the darkness. It was a black cat, an animal with a dark coat and piercing eyes, which seemed to watch him with disconcerting calm. Seeing the animal, the priest sighed with relief. Oh, it's just a cat. It must have come in to protect itself from the cold. However, the next day, yet another object disappeared. And soon after, the black cat appeared again, always near the altar, always with the same enigmatic look. The next morning, as the small church began to welcome its first worshippers, Father Vicente couldn't get the black cat out of his mind. He tried to push the thought away, thinking it was just a coincidence, but something about the animal's behavior bothered him. With each new disappearance of a sacred object, the mysterious cat appeared soon after, almost as if it were monitoring the church. The rumors among the community intensified. Dona Alzira and other ladies whispered among themselves, casting worried glances in the direction of the altar. I knew there was something strange. That black cat can only be a bad omen, commented Mrs. Alzira, crossing her arms tightly. Other faithful began to agree with her, and soon the cat became the main suspect in the disappearances. Within a few weeks the buzz was widespread. Many believed that the animal brought bad luck, or even that it was a manifestation of some spirit that haunted the church. Father Vicente, why do you allow that cat to stay here? It appears with every object that disappears. It can't be a coincidence, insisted Mrs. Alzira, her eyes wide. Father Vicente sighed and tried to calm her down, although he himself was beginning to doubt his own logic. We can't condemn a poor animal for superstitions, Mrs. Alzira. He's just... a cat. I believe there is a rational explanation for this, but deep down the priest knew he had to find out the truth for himself. So he began to observe the cat's behavior closely, every movement, every time the feline prowled around the church in silence. And to his surprise, the animal really did seem to have some kind of purpose. One Sunday afternoon, after the end of Mass, the cat began to circle around some of the pictures, stopping especially in front of that of St. Francis. Its eyes seemed to shine as it stared at the saint, almost as if it were challenging him. And then, with slow, steady steps, the cat moved to the side of the church, stopping in front of a small door that led to the back, where objects for the priest's exclusive use were stored. Vicente's heart raced, and he approached cautiously, as if afraid of interrupting some kind of silent ritual. He noticed the cat standing in front of the closed door, staring at him as if it wanted to say something. The priest hesitantly looked around to make sure no one else was around, and then spoke quietly, almost in a whisper. What are you trying to show me? 
The cat blinked slowly, keeping its gaze fixed on the door. Something in that posture seemed to prompt the priest to act. With a mixture of fear and curiosity, he reached out and opened the door. The cat entered without hesitation, disappearing into the dark corridor that led to the storeroom. When the priest turned on the lights and followed the animal, he noticed that it had stopped again, this time in front of an old bookcase where candles and other items were kept. And on examining the place more closely, Vincent noticed something that sent a shiver down his spine. The cat was standing exactly where some of the missing objects had last been seen. Vincent's mind was filled with a whirlwind of thoughts. Could that cat really be linked to the disappearances? And if so, what was its real purpose there? As he pondered, the cat turned, gave him one last enigmatic look, and left the warehouse in silent steps, as if it knew it had planted a deep doubt in the priest's mind. And it was at that moment that Vincent decided he would investigate the mystery alone. That night, when absolute silence covered the church and its surroundings, Father Vincent prepared himself for a risky plan. If that cat really was connected to the disappearances, he needed to follow it and find out where the mysterious feline could lead him. The church clock struck midnight, when the priest heard a faint meow echoing through the empty hall. Following the sound, Vicente found the cat standing by the altar, staring at him as if it knew exactly what he was up to. Seized by a mixture of apprehension and curiosity, the priest slowly approached. The cat stared at him for a moment longer and then started walking towards the sacristy. Vincent silently followed the animal, watching its every move carefully. The cat advanced with light but determined steps until it stopped in front of an old door in the sacristy, a door that hardly anyone used except on rare occasions to access the church's storeroom. It was a forgotten place, gathering dust and cobwebs over the years. The priest hesitated for a moment, his hand resting on the rusty doorknob. He took a deep breath and opened the door, feeling a slight chill when it creaked. The cat entered first, and Vincent followed with firm steps, but what he found on the other side made his heart race. The cat stopped in front of a wall at the back of the warehouse, a wall that Vincent had always considered solid and ordinary. However, the animal seemed to perceive something he couldn't see. The cat sat down and stared at the wall, fixedly, without looking away. Vincent, his breathing quickening, ran his hand over the surface of the wall, trying to understand what could be there that was so interesting to the feline. Suddenly, he felt a small bump in the plaster, like a lever in disguise. The touch almost made him flinch, but he forced himself to continue. He pressed the raised point, and the sound of a hidden mechanism filled the room. To his amazement, the wall began to move slowly, revealing a secret door that was camouflaged in the middle of the bricks. Vincent took a step back, surprised and intrigued. How is this possible? he muttered to himself. It was as if that passage had been kept hidden for years, perhaps even decades. The cat then took another step forward, passing through the newly revealed opening, and gave the priest one last look, as if to encourage him to continue. Resigned to finding out where that trail would lead him, Vicente took a small flashlight and crossed the secret doorway, entering a dark and dusty corridor that seemed to lead to the forgotten depths of the church. With every step he took down that gloomy corridor, Father Vincent felt his heart racing. The silence was absolute, and the air, dense, seemed charged with a heavy, forgotten past. The narrow walls were cold to the touch, and the smell of mold and damp made the atmosphere even more oppressive. The black cat walked ahead of him, advancing naturally, as if it knew the mysterious path. Finally, after what seemed like endless minutes, Vincent reached a large, dark room. When he illuminated the room with his flashlight, he was amazed. It was a kind of warehouse full of old objects. There were shelves full of dusty old books and documents, worn frames and religious relics that seemed to have been forgotten there for decades. Amidst the pile, he saw some of the sacred objects that had recently disappeared, 
candles, rosaries, and even one of the small statues of saints. Good God, he muttered as his eyes scanned the room. Who would have brought these items here? And why? The cat stopped next to a particular bookcase, staring at the priest with a look that seemed almost human, as if waiting for his next move. Guided by intuition, Vincent approached that particular bookcase and, as he looked through the items, he noticed something peculiar. A set of ancient manuscripts and records, organized with a care that contrasted with the rest of the place. He picked up one of the documents and opened it carefully. As he leafed through the yellowed pages, he discovered that they were the church's own records, dating back centuries. However, something about these documents alarmed him. They mentioned disputes between priests and religious leaders of the time and revealed secrets that Vincent would never have imagined. Among the pages, he found a letter signed by a former priest describing forbidden practices and rituals carried out secretly in that same now-forgotten ward. As he read, Father Vincent began to understand the magnitude of what had been hidden. That wing was not just a storage room, it was a kind of secret refuge where the church had kept compromising documents and objects that, over time, had been considered dangerous or heretical. It was a hidden collection, a part of church history that no one should have access to. He was so engrossed in his discoveries that he almost didn't notice when the black cat approached again, rubbing lightly against his cassock. The animal's gentle touch brought him back to reality, and he bent down, looking the feline in the eye. You... We're saving all this, weren't you? He whispered, more to himself than to the cat. The animal responded with a low meow, as if confirming the priest's suspicions. Vincent realized that the cat seemed to be there as a kind of guardian, making sure that no one profaned or revealed the church's dangerous secrets. Suddenly, one last bookcase in the corner of the room caught his eye. Amid the aged wooden boxes and fragile documents, there was a small locked chest. Intrigued, Vicente picked it up and with trembling hands opened the lid. Inside he found more manuscripts, but these were even older, written in a language he didn't immediately recognize. Among the papers, a single sheet caught his eye. It mentioned a prophecy, something that seemed to relate to the cat. Vincent slowly closed the trunk, feeling that something big and dark was revealing itself little by little. This discovery would change everything he knew about the church and the role of that enigmatic cat. And deep down in his soul, a certainty struck him. He wasn't just dealing with mysteries from the past, but with something that still lived, pulsed, and manifested itself in that church. That night, Father Vicente could hardly sleep. His mind was buzzing with images of ancient documents, disputes between religious and the enigmatic presence of the cat. Everything seemed to conspire to lead him to this discovery. But what did it really mean? Who had hidden all those objects? And why did the cat seem to play such an important role? The next morning, before dawn, Vicente returned to the church. He needed to review the documents he had found, convinced that there was something greater there than he yet understood. When he entered the hidden room for the second time, the cat was already waiting for him, as if it knew he was coming back. The animal watched him with an intense gaze, almost demanding that he continue his investigation. Vicente approached the table where he had left the small chest with the manuscripts and opened it again feeling a chill as he touched the fragile papers. He began to leaf through the pages carefully, reading the words that revealed rituals and ancient protection practices, and then he came across something that made him shudder. One of the documents mentioned a sacred guardian, an entity sent to protect the sacred objects and secrets of the church, ensuring that they were never exposed to the public eye. According to the text, this guardian would manifest itself in the form of an animal, more specifically, a black cat. Vincent looked at the cat, which continued to sit beside him, as if waiting patiently. The priest, intrigued, whispered, So, you're the guardian? Are you here to protect these secrets? 
The cat just stared at him in silence, but there was something almost supernatural about its presence. Vincent sensed that the animal was aware of its responsibility there and somehow understood its mission. That church housed more than a forgotten collection. It was a place where time and secrets intertwined, protected by something that transcended the material world. As he read more about the ancient rituals, the priest realized something even more frightening. The documents suggested that the presence of the cat was not a coincidence or superstition. The animal seemed to be a guardian appointed by an ancient rite of protection, an enchantment that could only be undone if the guardian himself allowed it. This explained why the cat had led Vincent there, as if it were allowing him to understand its true nature and mission. Overcome by a wave of respect and awe, Vincent knelt before the cat and in a gesture of reverence murmured a prayer. He understood that this animal was not just a companion or an enigma. It was a sacred entity, and he had to protect it. As soon as the prayer was over, the cat got up and approached Vincent, rubbing lightly against him, as if accepting his loyalty. The priest, now determined to preserve that secret, decided that he would protect the cat and the sacred objects that were hidden there. In the days that followed, Father Vicente kept the secret of the hidden room and the cat's true role as guardian. However, the community didn't seem willing to accept the presence of that mysterious cat. The faithful continued to observe the animal with suspicion and fear, increasingly feeding the idea that its presence brought bad luck and interfered with the peace of the church. One Sunday morning, after Mass, some of the oldest and most influential churchgoers gathered outside the church. Dona Alzira, always at the forefront of discussions, pulled Father Vicente into the middle of the group, his face red with indignation. Father, it's high time you got rid of that cat. He's a bad omen. It's clear to everyone, he insisted with a determined expression. Ever since he appeared, strange things have been happening. What if he's bringing misfortune to our church? Other faithful nodded in agreement, and the murmur of approval spread quickly. Vincent raised his hands, asking for silence, and with a deep sigh he began to explain. I understand your concern, but I can assure you that the cat is not a danger. He... he has an important role here, perhaps more than anyone realizes. We need to respect his presence. Those words caused an unexpected reaction. The faithful looked at each other, shocked, and some began to whisper about the priest's behavior. He realized that by trying to protect the cat, he was arousing even more suspicion. Donna Alzira gave him a sharp, suspicious look. Father, are you implying that this animal is... sacred? She asked, with a mixture of skepticism and disgust. Vicente hesitated, trying to measure his words. He knew that anything he said could generate more mistrust but he also didn't want to betray the trust he felt he had established with the cat. Let's just say that it plays a protective role, he replied, his voice firm. There are mysteries that we don't understand, but that we must respect. This cat is here to preserve something very ancient and important. The explanation wasn't enough. Suspicions grew and voices rose in protest. Many claimed that the priest was bewitched by the animal, that his faith was being tested by forces he didn't understand. The disapproving looks and the heavy atmosphere made it clear to Vicente that he needed to protect the cat at any cost, even if it meant confronting his own community. That night, the priest made a decision. He would keep the cat safe, away from the gazes of those who wanted it expelled. That week, Father Vicente realized that the community's resistance was stronger than he had imagined. Rumors were spreading through the town, and some people even avoided going to church, claiming that the place was cursed by the black cat. Determined to protect the animal and the secrets it held, Vicente tried one last strategy, to convince the faithful that the cat was not a threat, but a symbol of protection for the church and its history. The following Sunday, after Mass, the priest decided to speak directly to the community. He gathered the faithful in the main hall and, in a firm and serious voice, began, My brothers and sisters, I know that many of you have been worried about the presence of the black cat in the church. But today, 
I want you all to understand something very important. The attentive eyes of the faithful were on him, and the tension in the air was almost palpable. Donna Alzira, with her arms crossed, looked at him suspiciously. Vicente took a deep breath and continued, This cat is not a sign of bad luck. On the contrary, he hesitated for a second, searching for the right words. He is a guardian, sent to protect this church. Since ancient times, our church has kept important secrets, stories that need to be preserved. This cat, my brothers, is the symbol of that protection. The hall fell silent, and the expressions of the faithful became a mixture of surprise and disbelief. Some whispered among themselves, but the majority continued to listen, intrigued. Vincent continued, trying to capture their attention and hearts. I know it seems difficult to understand, but remember, God works in mysterious ways. He can use any of his creatures to take care of his temples and his secrets. And this cat? He's here for a purpose. It's no coincidence that he appears just when the church needs protection. Donna Alzira couldn't contain her indignation and intervened. Father, how do you expect us to believe that a black cat is an envoy from God? That's superstition. But before she could continue, a young woman who was watching the conversation raised her voice. Father Vicente is right. I myself saw the cat approach me when I felt lost and distressed, as if it knew I needed consolation. Her eyes shone with emotion. Ever since that day I've felt that he protects us, like a silent guardian. Other believers began to speak out, recounting small episodes in which the cat had appeared unexpectedly, as if to bring them peace or comfort. Little by little the community's attitude began to change. At first, some still remained suspicious, but others, touched by the stories, began to see the animal in a new light. Gradually, the presence of the black cat stopped being seen as a threat and began to be regarded with respect. The faithful began to associate it with the spiritual protection of the temple, an unexpected but comforting manifestation of faith. Over time, the cat became an accepted, even respected presence among churchgoers. Vicente organized a small exhibition in the old wing, where he placed some of the sacred objects and historical documents he had discovered, allowing the community to rediscover the rich history of the place. The cat, now seen as the true guardian of that sanctuary, continued to circulate around the church, fulfilling his silent role as protector. And every night, when Father Vicente retired, he felt a deep peace, certain that, with the help of this mysterious guardian, the church would always be protected and that the secrets of the past would remain where they belong, guarded under the watchful eye of the black cat.